Hey, Becca. The current method for diagnosing hey. autism is to uh, conduct these interviews. They're usually parental interviews or interviews with a high functioning individual asking them very subjective questions. Right now it's, not, it's non scientific, it's an opinion and it's a score based system. Because of that, it's, it's very broad, so it includes a lot of uh, people under the same category. She has such a rare condition. There's only 700 people in the world that have this uh, feline McDermott syndrome. They're now calling it genetic-based autism disorder. It's exciting that uh, they're doing this research. It's apparently very groundbreaking. What we were hooking up to Rebecca were these little electromagnetic sensors that we have here. 240 times a second we get the position in space of each one of those sensors. In particular, what we're looking for in the gait study is we're looking for how the rhythms of her, her walking improve. The beauty of this technique is that because we've looked at people who certainly have autism and we've measured their movements and we've compared them to other people and we found um, systematic differences, we can then use that instead to diagnose autism and get a more precise diagnosis. Each child is unique uh, and requires a different, unique treatment tailored to that child. You know, I don't know that this is necessarily going to help Rebecca, but certainly uh, it's going to help other kids as it goes, things move forward. And who knows, maybe in the next couple of years they'll come up with some dramatic uh, leaps and discoveries and things that could help her. There's a lot of controversy out there, but it's just a matter of agenda or egos or whatever. What is different about this is that what we're doing is based, uh, is purely objective. It's what it is. That's, that's true data, that's true science.